A new climate study of ancient Antarctic ice proves carbon dioxide's direct impact on the rise in global temperatures that ended the last ice age. So how relevant is that today? Well, joining us live via Skype from Grenoble, France, is Frederick Perrinin, scientist who is the first author of this new study. Uh, sir, good to talk to you. So what, what is so important about these findings? Uh, it's clear that we are releasing a lot of CO2 now in the atmosphere, and we want to know how the climate uh, will evolve in the future, in the coming centuries. So uh, we cannot do experiments with climate because it's too complex, it's, it's too big. Uh, but we can take experiments from the past, and ISCOR brings some information on the past. So we looked at the last deglaciation because it is the, the last major reorganization of the climate um, which uh, has seen a large increase in CO2 also at the same time. Frederick, it's, it's long been thought that the temperatures uh, rose and then carbon dioxide um, emissions seemed to be greater after the temperature rose, an 800-year gap in between potentially, but you say that number may be close to 200 years or even maybe it happened at the same time. How? Yeah, we, we are seeing they happen at the same time. Uh, within 200 years. Uh, so maybe CO2 was uh, leading by 200 years uh, even. Uh, so why? Uh, because before people were using another technique to evaluate uh, the relative timing between CO2 and Antarctic temperature. Uh, the problem is complex because uh, the temperature is recorded in the snow at the surface of the ice sheet, while CO2 is recorded in gas bubble at about 100 meters below the surface when the, uh, the bubble closed off. Uh, so you need to evaluate how this depth, which we call it the locking depth, evolved during the past. And uh, before people were using, yeah, before people were using a densification, a mechanical densification model to evaluate this locking depth, but now we are using a new technique and we are proving that their densification model were not working. Uh, Frederick, we want to show this image th that you have. It is this image of ice observed under polarized light. What exactly do you extract from the, these colors that we see in this picture? Okay, so each uh, different color represents a nice crystal. So we can uh, infer the size of the crystals and also their orientation in space. Uh, and um, uh, ice crystal rotates uh, when the ice flows. So uh, um, when you infer the, the orientation of the ice crystal, you can infer the past mechanical history of the, of the ice layers. It's, uh, it's, it's fascinating stuff and a uh, groundbreaking technology and, and, and experimentation that you've done here. Frederick Perrinin joining us this morning from France. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. And don't forget, you can check out this uh, forecast and this uh, particular study on weather.com.